Welcome back everyone. Today is Wednesday, October, October, November 10th. And I'm just doing a little prequel to uh, an update to today's video. Today's video is actually going to be fairly short because I had, um, <laughs> like I normally do uh, many times, I don't intend to do what I end up doing. So I really wasn't planning on making a video of today's, but it actually, I wish I did because it actually was quite interesting uh, and different from what I had been doing. Um, but I wanted to give you just a quick update on the lean-to. Um, I've got all but eight rafters up. And as I've said, I'll link to the other video here in the description or try to get it on the screen. But um, I'm not going to do a whole video on this, but just updates. And what I'm going to do, uh, there's eight. I have eight more to go. I put all these up yesterday and didn't have time to finish these. So I've got eight more to go, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little video of just uh, one evolution. So what I do is I, I put two up at a time, well, without moving, not two at a time, but um, without me having to move. So um, this is a little different because I'm doing this all by myself, whereas last time I had help from my friend Patrick. Um, so, and I'm going to show you how I do it using the man basket. Uh, the nice thing is I still have enough room on the forks so I can get over here and get the lumber off the trailer and I can't I had to slide the wood forward because the thickness of the man basket will not fit between the deck and, and that spacing there and the problem is it's very hard. I cannot see the forks at all when I'm on there with the basket. So I have to get off and make sure that I'm not going to hit the trailer because I don't want to hit the trailer or the lumber and knock it over. But it worked out nicely because I could bring all the stacks over. There's eight in the stack. Um, so I was able to bring them over and cut the angle on them, which is on these two by four covered horses here. So I drop, bring the stack down, drop it there, cut my angles, and I can put them up. So I'm just going to give a quick evolution of uh, the last eight. They still need uh, hangers, uh, both top and bottom afterwards, and they still need all the 2x4 purlins for the metal roof that still need to go on, but this is where we are. So let's give a quick, quick update, and then... Uh, the rest of the video of um, making the ramp on the diversion trail and getting the float out of the ditch. So, enjoy.
All right, so you saw that. Drop those off. Bring the tractor in so I can do I can do that one and I can also do that one without having to move. I can do both of them. And this ladder will be moved over here, so I you'll see. But uh, cut the rafter, bring it in. I put the tail end, stand it up there. And then I walk this one up, sit it on that fork, go up top, and I'll show you what I do up there. But, uh, and then repeat the process for the second one, and then I have to back up. So let's do it. And an important thing to show here, and this is like the perfect one, and luckily I did buy one extra, so I can uh, swap it out. But uh, boards have what's called a crown. It's kind of like a bridge. It's higher in the middle, it kind of curves, and that, that's a good thing because as the load settles on it, it will flatten out, and you want to make sure the crowns are always up. And it's hard to explain to somebody what a crown is, but I think in this one, I don't know with the sun, let me block it, maybe that'll help. But if you can look at, see how much this board curves like this, that's a good example of crown. Now that's way too much, because you can see pretty much they're flush on this side. And if you look over here, if you look at the space right here, you'll see how much of a crown this thing has. Let me go from this end, maybe the, the sun. But I think that'll give you an idea. So that's, if anybody wondered what crown was, that's a crown. And most of these, this lumber came from Lowe's, which is not the greatest place to get them. But it's hard to get lumber at all right now. But most of their boards have no crowns. I really have to look at them and try to decide which is the least, uh, <laughs> the least side that I want to use or the most popular side and popular side, but the best side to use. And, but that one will give you a good idea of what crown looks like. Um, but you want to make sure they're all the same. So I'm going to, I'm not going to cut that one. I'm going to swap that one out. All right, so as I talked about, look for the crown. This one is, I mean, again, what I talked about. They're both equally straight and crooked at the same time, if that makes any sense. So, a little bit, this is the top. And what I usually do, especially if you're cutting them ahead of time, is just make a little V, almost like a Star Trek emblem pointing upwards. Some people just put a, an arrow, but I just make a V pointing up. So if somebody else grabs it or when I don't, I grab it, I don't have to look at it to wonder which way it goes. So the three and 12 pitch set for three and 12. The tails will get cut afterwards on these, so it doesn't matter. So. Just mark it. Cut it. Now it's ready to go. And I'm not pre-cutting these, I'm doing one at a time, so. So when I grab it, tail first. Just push it up against that one. Stand it up, and this is a light one, luckily. Pull out a sliver that I just got. Some of them are really heavy with the, that are still wet with the pressure treating. Sit it up there, climb up, and I'll show you. I've got a spacer, spacer and a clamp for this. I'll show you close up what that's for afterwards. So I set it up on top. The spacer has to be put in the right place. So I pre-marked it. This is the top and mark it here where the spacer goes. Sorry I didn't bring my chest cam bracket, strap, whatever you want to call it. But, so I mark it, get the clamp, 
set it on the mark, crank it up, even though I dropped the piece of the clamp down there when I was trying to show it to you, I just have to lift it up higher and it works. So that's basically that, and now I get myself situated, turn it up. And the reason for the spacer is you want this space between the bottom of the fascia to be exactly the same because on a building like this they've moved over the as the poles dry out they kind of move and I'll get a closer shot up of this so I'll get it in toenail it in a lot of people when they use joist hangers they don't toenail them because they're going to believe that joint fingers are the greatest thing going and the strongest thing, and they are not. I'll take a toenail over a joint stinger any day, but I still put them on it anyway, so it's not like I don't use them, but I don't rely on the joint stinger to uh, hold it. All right, so that's that. Then I'll repeat the process. I'll cut the next one. Do the same thing next to it. And then I back the tractor up two feet and do the next two. So that's basically how it goes. All right, there you go. They're all up. Just need purlins and brackets. And then obviously trim, but that'll all go after the metal. So I got to order the metal for this side and for the boathouse on the other side. And like I said, I am going to close up the sides, but I'm not going to be doing it right now because as I talked about, I'm putting a room up in the front. So I got to do the floor in there first, but this will work out great. And I'm going to put big techs in there in the interim until I get a skid steer and a mini. So that's really what I'm building this for. So on with the video welcome back everyone today is monday october 25th it's actually at 223 today will be 27 months since david's passing so i'm not going to do too much today i came down here it was it's been raining on and off it was supposed to rain later this afternoon but it started raining earlier um but what i'm going to do is and i'm not even gonna i didn't even bring the cameras down but um i'm going to get that float out of <coughs> out of the uh there's a little there's a little uh ditch there in between where and i did cut down a lot of the uh from the other side i cut down all those weeds this side i'm going to pull over so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open the ditch up i'm going to pull the ditch into here and then i'm just going to pull the float out rather than rather than have to put uh, eye hooks on it and lift it up with the chain or straps. But what I really wanted to show you was, I'm, I don't know if I stayed in the Holiday Inn Express last night or how I just came up with this epiphany. I should have thought of it yesterday. Well, as I talked about, as I talked about, you know, over here having to fill that in and wait till it, you know, and then go fast. This looks like a big pork chop, right? All I got to do is cut the bone off right here. All I've got to do, and I can reach right across from here. I just reach out, take out about four feet of that, and the water will then come this way instead of having to go all the way around the island. And uh, then I can just fill it in. I can fill this in right here. And I'm probably not going to do that yet because I can use that material. I can use that material right where I'm standing. So I'll probably wait and uh, do it then. So, but I just figured I'd point that out. So, all right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just go pull that float out of there. And if there's anything interesting, I'll take picture uh, video with my camera. And I figured while the sun's not blazing out here today, I can get a good, better view. So that's looking down towards where the broken dam is. And you can see how much could use to be cleared back. <clears throat> but there's the float. There's the other one. You see it right there. It's got leaves on it. See how it's wedged in between the trees? So, 
David and I got the other one out that time farther down stream but I can't get this one I won't be able to get this one till I get the the uh, road built up so I can reach down over and get it and that one that one I will have to hoist out like we did the other one with the chains but yeah so I'm gonna have to do something in here because this is the creek is too narrow over here this will cause a choke point and make it want to wash out over here but just figured I'd catch a glimpse of that while I was able to and while I was thinking of it okay here's a quick shot you can see it right there it's got some dirt on top of it but it's the same as the float that you've seen out there that's beached right now so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this I'm just gonna pull this ditch wall back and just try to uh, pull it out or flip it over but I, it's got like styrofoam on the bottom of it so I don't want to do too much to that because I'd like to put these out for the geese but you can see this is the way we're gonna come in so diversion trail comes that way but there's also a trail in the woods because I've got you know, there's a lot of trails that go in all in, in those woods out there that I cut in so it's all got to be brought up to this height all the way around and out so pulling this ditch out it won't make any difference because the ditch isn't used anymore anyway so it's just going to get filled in once I get that out of there then I'm going to fill this in so so that's what I'm going to do well, I don't, I'm not going to be able to really do this one-handed because you can't really do this one-handed, but you'll get the idea. So, so it's coming. I need two hands, though, but uh, I'll have that out of there. That's how I wanted to do it, and then get it, uh, I'll just get it along over the edge over there, so get it where it can't float if we get a storm. Well, here's another shot. I made a, made a little ramp so I can park I don't have to track the excavator all the way up that way I can leave it up here so this way I'm out of uh, flood danger if we got a big storm and um, this is the end that needs to be like I said this is it's gonna go from here to there so pretty much this whole area I may curve it around if I don't have enough material but uh, I think I will so I'll probably make it so this this will be a big corner here um, be a little wider than normal I don't know I haven't decided yet um, depends on how if I need more water I mean I don't really need the lake to be any bigger <laughs> it's it, it's 15 acres now so it'll probably be about uh, 16 and a half 17 by the time I'm done with it cutting all the corners off so I think that's big enough okay well here's the end of I don't want to say end of the day because it wasn't it was only an hour and a half probably but I got that most of that pile knocked down I ran out of time I couldn't get the rest of that little bit but I think what I'm gonna do my change of plans and you can see if you look I've lowered the water level about uh, eight ten inches by when I made cleared out that creek channel over there but I'm gonna I'm gonna build it up from this side first like from here and work that way so I'm gonna build this up move those blocks up on top as close to the trees out of my way as possible and then I'm gonna work my way this way with bringing this back and then I can use that I have to move those trees like I said but I can move it back this way I'll know how much I need because if I don't what I'll probably do is dig that all up and put it up against that bank and for two reasons um, main reason is if I ever need material down the down the line over the years I can just take it from the edge and not have to worry about it would really be bad if I had to buy if I had to pay for material when I've got all this material here so once it's underwater I don't want to have to drain this down again so I built I started building up this with it and what I'm standing on is almost level with what was there but you know it's got to go up another six feet or so so I'll keep digging from there and the float is out didn't come out unscathed though it was I don't know if I cracked it or if it had a crack but some of the concrete fell off 
the styrofoam. The thing's been flooded and dropped and banged into trees and everything else. So I don't know if I did it or not. I just saw it when I pulled it out. But either way, I think it'll still float. I don't think they'll fall off. So there's the float. And now I've got a ramp that I can go up and down here with the tractor and or the uh, excavator. So that's a good thing. And I got rid of most of the weeds. That's where the ditch goes all the way out. That's, pr that's actually going to be one of my, right in there is going to be one of my overflows. It's going to go down that ditch. So right in this corner is going to be an overflow. And there'll be one on the other side. So, all right. Well, that's all I can do for today. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.